Let's talk about it. Ain't got nothing on you. Let's talk about it. Hello, and welcome to the latest edition of Let's Talk About It. We got a good one for you today, folks. We're going to cover some of the recent activity with the women's golf team, take a look at the Pioneer football team game this past weekend, and talk to some men's soccer players about their recent success. I'm Rebecca Bartlemy. And I'm Marquise Evans. Here's what's been happening in Pioneer Athletics. This past weekend, the Pioneer football team won their fourth consecutive homecoming victory. They defeated the Pointers from UW-Stevens Point 30-27 with sophomore quarterback Jack Eddy leading the way in his first collegiate start in place of the injured Tom Kelly. Eddy threw for two, 375 yards and four touchdowns to four different receivers in Saturday's win. The Pioneers trailed 27-23 in the fourth quarter but Eddie was able to cap off a 10-play, 75-yard drive with a toss to Russell Martin for the win. The University of Wisconsin Platteville women's golf team finished fourth at the WIAC tournament this past weekend at Arrow, Lake Arrowhead Golf Course. Junior Stephanie Baraboo finished in third place by beating her own school record by two strokes for 248 points through 54 holes. The men's soccer team defeated Edgewood last night 3-0 at Ralph E. Davis Pioneer Stadium. The win marks their sixth win out of the last eight contests, and it puts them at 7-3-3 for the season. Our own Jeremy Williamson sat down with a few of the players and talked to them. Hi, I'm Jeremy Williamson, and I'm joined in the studio with two men's soccer players. We have Logan Rinderneck and Scott Sibick. And Scott, at this point in the season, is this where you expected to be as far as uh, the team and as far as yourself? Um, we always kind of look back. It's kind of pretty common to look back at last season and compare. And as of right now, we already have a, more wins than last year. Uh, so that's a really good sign. I'm happy where we're at right there. Uh, we still have a chance to make a playoff push, I think. We just have to keep one in. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm happy where we're at right now. How's your first season going as, uh, as a uw Platteville pioneer? It's going pretty well. Um, coming into the season, I was just a little bit timid, um, not knowing anybody but, I guess, one player. Um, but coming into preseason, um, hard work and off-season uh, work uh, kind of has really kind of paid off. Uh, it's prepared me really well. And, um, coming to a team that just invites you so well, um, they kind of make you feel like a family and just another uh, brother on the team. Why did you choose UW Platteville? Uh, coming into my high school uh, year uh, as a freshman, um, I've always wanted to be an engineer. Um, looking at an engineering school while still being able to play soccer <coughs> was my main goal. Um, and Enzo talking to me my final season of my senior year. Um, has really connected me with a school that I was actually wasn't really uh, familiar with. Did you expect to be playing this much and having this much success at this point in the season or at all when you first came to UW Platteville? At the point last season when I came and watched games, I was actually really timid and I was actually um, uh, really shy um, because I didn't really know how the team played and I was kind of scared that I wasn't uh, going to be able to gel with them. Um, and then when I came through, uh, through the preseason with them, uh, it actually seemed like I actually worked really well with them and being able to have uh, support um, of each of the teammates and each of the captains has really pushed me harder and harder to work harder um, during the season. Can I ask you, can you explain how, what happened with conference as far as uh, there being no WIAC for men's soccer and how you said you're going to make a playoff push. How, how, do you, how would you make the playoffs this year? Yeah, so in the past, we had five people in our conference. It was us, Superior, Finlandia, UW Oshkosh, and UW Whitewater. So as of last season, Superior dropped out of the conference and they moved to a Minnesota conference. So in past seasons, um, five teams wasn't enough to get an automatic bid. So we still entered the tournament as an independent school. Having three teams now, and losing the conference just means we won't have any conference accolades, which isn't too important. It's just those individual awards. Uh, it still comes down to winning games and uh, having that best record you can have to reach the tournament as independent. How's the defense playing so far this season? Well, how are they playing so well? And um, what's improved from last season? Well, one of the biggest questions we had, I think, coming from last year, this year, was going to be our back line. So, um, so coming through this year, 
losing Will Preto early in the season was a huge hit. So it was, it was really tough losing him. So a lot of the freshmen and younger athletes had to step up in the defensive role. And um, we moved another senior from the midfield, uh, Caleb Sedlicek, to the back line. And he's um, kind of being the big brute, brute out there. Um, so I think, some of the, I think the freshmen have kind of been feeding off his energy and kind of playing like him, which is huge. But as a unit, they've been playing really well. So yeah, it, was, it, it, it wasn't just a miracle that the defensive was playing really well. It's an effort from coach and the, the back line. How important is it that the defense is clicking as well as uh, connecting with the offense and moving the ball forward so that you guys are able to score goals? We couldn't tie or win games without them. Um, their push to have a shutout and their push to um, not allow as many goals is actually helping us a lot. And um, them giving their effort and um, them showing us that they care only pushes the offense harder. Um, being able to gel with them after a play or after a counterattack has really helped us when trying to push for a goal. But having Scott back there and having the senior-led captains up there, um, they only push you harder and only make you feel like you need to work harder and harder just so you feel like they satisfy you. And it actually makes the team work harder and harder and makes us uh, gel a lot better. One of the big games, biggest games of the year is coming up against UW Oshkosh. He mentioned that there's still Oshkosh and Whitewater and they both just happen to be ranked in the top 20 in the nation. How are you guys preparing um, offensively or defensively for a team of that high of a caliber? We have to finish our chances. Um, if the defense can do their work, the offense should be able to do their work. And um, It's come down to we just have to finish our chances because we create them. And that's the, the philosophy is you can't win games if you can't finish your chances. Oshkosh is another opponent just like any other. We, we won't treat them any differently. Obviously, we want to respect them for what they've done um, this season. But prepar uh, preparation-wise, we're going to just do the same thing we've always been doing, um, just refine some small things we need, think we need to work on, uh, get a good scrimmage in before the game, um, and just go out there and take it to them. Best of luck, boys. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining me in the studio, and I'm Jeremy Williamson. The men return to Pioneer Stadium on Saturday to play UW Oshkosh at 2. The Pioneer volleyball team will try to end their four-game losing streak this weekend at the UW Eau Claire tournament, taking on four teams from around the Midwest on Saturday and Sunday. That's all we have for you on this week on Let's Talk About It. I'm Rebecca Bartlemay. And I'm Marquise Edmonds. We'll see you next time.